Hello and welcome to Ms. Ma's Grade 10 Math class. This is 3.1, Investigating the Properties of Triangles. So we did quite a few definitions in class, but I'm just going to highlight the median for you right now. Median extends from the midpoint of a triangle to the opposite vertex, and they meet at the centroid. So all three are going to meet at the centroid, which is the center of mass. So basically, if I wanted to take a triangle and balance it on my finger, I'm just going to draw a hand right now. That's my hand. Um, that's the thumb. <laughs> and I just want to balance it. You know, usually if you try to balance a piece of paper on your hand, it's going to fall over. Uh, but if you do it in the centroid at the center of mass, then it will stay will stay put. So it'll just balance right there. So that's kind of a cool property of the centroid. Um, and there are other uh, characteristics of the median that I'm going to talk about in a second. But first we're going to find the centroid of triangle ABC right here. So I know we did uh, some similar things in the last unit, but uh, I just want to reiterate how to do these. So A, B, C, I'm just trying to draw a triangle that is scalene and um, it doesn't look like a right angle triangle just because it keeps it from tricking me later. And so I've got my A, B, C, and you can see that I haven't picked any particular order. I don't have a grid. I'm just trying to keep things straight in my head so that I know what's going on. So I'm going to find the midpoint of A, B, I think, and let that be one of my medians like this. And I'm going to choose uh, to B, B, C as well. So from A to B, C, and I'm going to call that N. And uh, so now I'm finding this point of intersection, which will be my centroid. I do. I could find this third one as well from uh, the midpoint of AC to B, but I only need to find two lines in order to find the point of intersection. The third one is guaranteed to go through that same point, so I'm just going to do the minimum amount required. Okay, so uh, the first thing we're going to do is find M, and by the way, you don't have to write let statements if you draw a diagram and label it. So make sure that you are labeling those diagrams and establishing what everything is supposed to be. And I'm writing my formula, of course. So I'm going to do 9 plus 3 over 2 and 5 plus 7 over 2, which gives me 12 over 2 and 12 over 2, so 6, 6. So that gives me my point M. Uh, and then I want to find the slope of MC because I'm going to find the equation of this line. So the slope of MC is equal to y2 minus y1. Again, writing the formula out. And this is the reason that I'm actually I actually drew this diagram is because I find it really difficult to keep track of all the points that I want to use. So then I can see M, C, and then, okay, it's this one and this one, this is M. And if you want, you could label it right here and it just keeps it a little bit uh, straighter, you know? So 6 minus 1 is 5 over 7, and that gives me the slope. So I'm going to, last thing, find the actual uh, line equation. Uh, I'm going to use uh, 6, 6, but you could also use 1, negative 1. Actually, I'm going to use 1, negative 1 because then the Multiplying is easier. So 1 equals 5 over 7 times negative 1 plus b. And uh, let me just extend the page here. So negative 5 over 7 is going to go over. So I'll get 1 plus 5 over 7, which gives me 12 over 7 equals b. So my equation is y equals uh, 5 over 7x plus 12 over 7, like that. Okay, so that's my first line. I'm going to do the second line as well. Um, so let's find n. I'm just going to do this in a different color. n is going to be, and I don't need to write the formula again because I already wrote it in the question. So if you're doing it multiple times in the same question, then you can just skip uh, writing it out so many times, 9 minus 1, 9 plus negative 1, and 7 plus 1 over 2. So that gives me 8 over 2 and 8 over 2, which is 4, 4. Then I'm going to find the slope of Na. And you can see I'm using big, big letters for the vertices and little letters for other things. Uh, it just keeps it a little bit more straight. So 4 minus 5 over 4 minus 3 it gives me negative 1. So now I can again plug it into y equals mx plus b. 
y equals mx plus b. Sorry, my tablet is being slightly unresponsive, so that's why I'm getting a little ugly letters here, but, you know, we'll do our best, plus b. Um, so b is equal to 8, like that. So we get y equals negative x plus 8. All right. Now I can just equate these two, so I'm going to call that 1, and I'm going to call this one 2, and I'm going to let them be equal, so equate, because they're both equal to y, right? So I can just say I'm substituting 1 into the other, 1 into 2, sorry, I'm getting a little lag, that's why, you get ugly letters there, and so negative x plus 8 is equal to 5 over 7x plus 12 over 7. I'm just going to extend my page again. I know it's a long question. Um, it uses a lot of the skills that you had in grade 9 as well as the ones that you learned in uh, grade, grade 10 as well. So um, negative x is going to be negative 7 over 7x minus 5 over 7x. I'm just moving the x's over. And over here I'm getting 12 over 7 minus 56 over 7. And if you don't know how uh, fractions work, oh, this is really ugly. You can't really read them, sorry. Um, then, you know, uh, make sure you review. You can go on Khan Academy. I, I might end up making a fractions review video if you want me to. So if you want one, you can just ask me. Negative 47, 44 over 7, right? So, um, and you know, if I'm making a mistake right now, let me know. Uh, I'm getting distracted by the lag. So 44 over 12 um, <coughs> gives us uh, 22 over 6, which is uh, 11 over 3. And I'll be positive. Okay, so that gives me the x value, and then I could just substitute it back in to 1. So again, we're just doing solving systems of equations. So x <laughs> equals 11 over 3 into... 1, and so we'll go y equals negative 11 over 3 plus, oh, you know what, I missed a step, so I would minus 1 myself. I should write the original equation out, negative x plus 8, and then I'll do y equals negative 11 over 3 plus and just converting to have an LCD, 24 over 3, so y is equal to 13 over 3. So that gives us the centroid. The centroid is uh, 11 over 3, 13 over 3 just like that. Okay? So make sure you answer the question properly. And there you go. Okay, so back to these characteristics. The median is going to bisect the area of the triangle. That's one of the aspects of the median. And it also is, uh, if we have the two equal sides of an isosceles triangle, um, the median of that between the two equal sides, so here I'm drawing an isosceles right here, uh, if I do the median between the two equal sides and these are equal, then this is actually going to be an altitude, meaning that it is a right angle. And it's also an angle bisector, so this angle will be equal to this angle, right? This angle right here will be equal to this angle right here, so half of the original angle. So that's, those are two characteristics of the median, and we're going to use those characteristics right now. So example B, the area of the triangle ABC is 12 square units with the area of ABD or find the area of ABD, where D is the midpoint of BC. So again, I'm just going to draw a triangle and try not to make it a right triangle or an isosceles or equilateral triangle, and I'll label it A, B, C, and D is going to be the midpoint of BC. So I want to know if this, uh, what the area of ABD is, right? This area right here. Well, since we know that the area of triangle ABC is 12 and since 
D is a midpoint, that's since D is a midpoint, therefore, oops, therefore AD is a median, which implies that the area of triangle ABD is half of the area of triangle ABC, right? That's one of the properties we just learned. So that means the area of ABD is equal to one half the area of triangle ABC, which is 12. So it's six units squared. And usually I'd just say write U, but I think it's slightly confusing uh, to see the U sometimes. So maybe it's better just write units. So there we go, we found the area. Okay, and this is the minimum number of steps required. You do need to write all of this out and, uh, you know, prove that you are just, you're doing it correctly. You can't just use the property without explaining why you're using it. Okay, so which line segments are perpendicular in JKL and which angles are equal? So if we're going to use this, we want to know what, what parts are perpendicular to the others. So because this is a median, um, so since L is midpoint, uh, JL is median, right? So and JKM, triangle JKM, is isosceles. So that tells us that this is the altitude, right, JL? Therefore, JL is altitude. So that means that JL is going to be perpendicular to LK. And uh, that's probably about it because we're looking at the JKL. So we're sh we shouldn't have a 90 degrees and a 90 degrees. That doesn't make any sense. Um, which angles are equal? Well, we can see that um, M is going to be equal to K. Angle M is equal to angle K. And you can see because I'm I'm not I don't have any other lines coming about it. I'm just using angle M and angle K, but uh, because it is split um, an isosceles triangle, so these angle bisectors are equal, or these angles are equal. It's an angle bisector, so uh, angle M J L, where the vertex is in the middle, is equal to angle K J L. So K vertex J L, right? So that and that's a property of uh, the isosceles medi median as well. Okay, one last question. I want to draw an isosceles triangle and construct the altitude from the ver vertex between equal sides. List three properties of this altitude, then altitude of a scaling triangle does not have. Okay, so this is one that I want you to try on your own. So write this question down, or if you have the printed notes, you can write on those notes. And I want you to do this and try to do as many as you can, at least three properties of this altitude, uh, and we will bring it to class and talk about it. Okay, so thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you.